welcome to another episode of Movie Reviews from the Asylum with Insane Mike and Jason. It's finger looking good. Mm. <laughs> hey everybody. Hi. How's it going? This is good. Thanks, thanks for that intro, Miss yeah, Gary. Good one, I know. Nice. <laughs> what movie are we going to review today, Jason? I think we should pick a movie. You know, we're, we're on YouTube. We have a Facebook page. Uh, we had a good friend of ours. I'm gonna put it down here. Yeah, it's right there. And uh, we had a fan write in, and they really wanted us to review this movie. So, since we're such nice, sweet gentlemen, we thought we'd follow through with at least one of the person that wrote in. So, uh, we're gonna review Poultry Guys. Bye, Chicken of the Living Dead. Finger looking night, dead. Night of the Chicken Dead. Night of the Chicken Dead. Night chicken of the, of the Night Dead. Chicken Dead Night. And your chicken is dead at night. Why do they need that whole second line there? Night of the Chicken Dead. Because they didn't, they weren't punny enough with the first part of the title. Poultry guys, that's good enough. That is good enough. Night of the Chicken Dead. Yeah, this, uh, so shout out to Chris Turnip Simmons for suggesting this title. Yeah, thanks, buddy. Yeah, screw you. Because uh, I had to watch this movie again. Hey, come on. This is a trauma joint directed by Lloyd, or as I pronounce it, affectionately call him La Lloyd Kaufman, because there's two L's. And this is, so this is a total trauma production. From what year? I think it's 2006. 2006! <laughs> and basically what this movie is about, it's about, now this is, I will say this, this movie is awesome because this will be the only movie we will ever review that I can honestly remember the characters' names. Because they're all named after fast, fast food franchises. Uh, oh, which I think is hilarious. I don't like that part really. <laughs> We're gonna go rounds on this one, I know it. Yeah. Arby and his high school sweetheart. Stupid name. What's her name? Wendy. Wendy. Aww, of course. Uh, it's kind of their last night together before she goes off to college. So they decide to like do it in a cemetery. Well, yeah. Not just any cemetery, but an ancient Indian burial ground cemetery. <laughs> where right off the bat, the dead start popping out, even yeah. though they don't realize it, and the zombie sticks his finger up his ass. Which he likes, and yeah. this becomes part of the storyline. Story? There's hey, come on, keep going, keep going. Two minutes into the movie, we get a we get a fart and a, and a boob shot. Two minutes Jeez. in, uh -huh. we get a fart noise and a boob shot. So, yay, yay trauma, your wheelhouse, there you go. So they're doing it, they're making out stuff, ancient in your bare ground. Uh, they end up leaving uh, because of a joke that I don't want to get into. And cut a year later, was it? Something like that. A year later, Ar Arby goes back to the ancient Indio Indian burial ground, I guess, to reminisce. I don't Happen. know. Happens. Um, where he has now found that there has been a fast food chicken franchise establishment built on the ancient Indian burial ground called American Chicken Bunker. And there's also protesters protesting the grand opening of American Chicken Bunker. And one of the leaders of the protest is his ex-girlfriend, now lesbian, Wendy. So in his distraughtness, he decides to go inside the fast food franchise and instantly gets hired to be the counter girl for the fast food franchise. Doesn't go through training or anything, just puts on a dress and really? now Grand he's working there. Had to get... had to, yeah, you would think they would hire a crew ahead of time, maybe? Not Things happen. People get cold feet and quit before. Uh, so then that's where we meet the rest of the characters. The manager, uh, um, French, the owner of that particular franchise store, uh, Denny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Told you I can remember these names. Then you got uh, the cooking staff, uh, Paco Bell, Jason's favorite character in the movie, and then oh, and I but I don't remember uh, the other racist stereotype character, the um, Muslim girl. I can't remember her character's name because I don't think she was named after a fresh food franchise. The only one, and I don't remember it. It's starting to go through a typical day, and Arby's trying to deal with. Uh, his girlfriend that he's still in love with becoming a lesbian he decides to get this job to kind of prove himself because <laughs> she 
she wanted him to go off to college too, but he didn't. He wanted to he wanted to stay back and take care of his um, retarded mother and blind father, uh, which is literally how they're referred to in the movie. Retards. Uh, yeah, and so, but there's something not quite right going on in American Chicken Bunker. What's going on? Uh, Jared from the fast food or from the subway commercial shows up, which I think is probably one of the funniest jokes in the movie because Jared, the guy who lost all that weight from the subway commercials, is played by trauma fat man regular Joe Flyshaker. So this ginormous guy, and everybody's just in awe of him because it's Jared from the fast food commercial from he's the subway so commercial. He's he lost so much weight. He's lost so much weight. So fit, so you know, <laughs> but he's still just big I fat. So he orders his food, and he eats it, and then like something goes wrong, and he runs into the bathroom, and way too much farting and squirting noises, and explosive flatulence all over the bathroom walls. Ugh, it's too much. As a matter of fact, there's even a cutaway dialogue scene when he's in when he's in the bathroom, just exploding everywhere. And there's even another there's a dialogue scene back out in the lobby that is that has farting noises and squirting noises laid out over top of the dialogue that you can't even understand the dialogue because that's still funny because you know it's one of those jokes that oh that's funny and then it goes on a little bit further and it's like oh, that's not funny anymore and then it goes on a little bit further and it's like oh it's funny again because it's too long and then it, but then it goes on for another half an hour yeah a half an hour yeah and eventually he, he poops out an egg and it hatches and it's a zombie chicken thing and this happens to other characters too where like the chicken parts that they're supposed to cook start attacking like Paco Bell gets thrown into the meat grinder um, Carl Jr. Uh, uh, fucks a frozen chicken and it bites his dick off and uh, but they just write all that off you know it's just like you know business as usual we gotta make this business successful because who shows up the general as I think a pretty pretty funny ripoff of Colonel Sanders because yeah. he's, he's dressed as Colonel Sanders he's got the white beard and stuff and they refer to him as the general and he shows up for the grand opening and defends defends his company on on, on their their quality food while the uh, the lesbian protesters are like who wear who wear shirts that say clam on them uh -huh. C L A M which is an acronym for something that who cares because it's a bad bad joke they get all up in the general's face about it and but he's defending it so they can't let anything go wrong with this grand opening even though people are all the employees are dying inside so blah 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 long story short uh, they end up the chickens, people start, the dead start turning into zombie chicken Indians to get revenge for being, building this on ancient Indian burial grounds and also revenge for killing chickens, right? Uh, yeah. So there's zombie Indian chickens, human be humans, that now are killing everybody in and it, it, then it turns into just a straight up zombie-esque type of movie within the third act. Even though they're zombie chickens, because they have beaks and feathers. But they're zombies. But they're also Indians, because the little feather pops up at the top of the head, too. With a headband on. So they're zombie chicken Indians. I hate this movie! I just, I love Troma. I've been a big Troma fan forever. Toxic Avenger's great. I, I even I even enjoy Toxic Avenger 2. Three is a hard pill to swallow, um, but Class of Newcomb High. Love Tro it. Tromeo and Juliet. Tromeo and Juliet. Tromeo and Juliet and then, and then Terra Firmer are two of my favorites, like hands down. Really I go best. back and forth between the two as being my all-time favorite Troma movie. Yep. And then they're followed up with Toxic Avenger 4, which... And Perfect. then this one. So I'm like, it's, it, it, it's almost like these, the Troma movies have become a parody of themselves. To the point of it's it's not funny anymore, and and let's let's take away let's take away the story elements to add more poop jokes and racial stereotype jokes. Right? No, it's not that bad. It's pretty bad. <laughs> well, 
Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't think it was as bad as you thought. I had a lot of fun with it. It was great seeing it shot on 35 millimeter. Um, so it looked and felt like good old trauma. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll always I mean, appreciate he shoots on 35 for sure. I thought a lot of the, because it's also a musical. I forgot to mention that. And so, uh, not that the songs are great, but all of the song moments with all the dancing and what they're doing in the song and dance moments, I really liked those parts. I thought those were some of the better parts. Some of them are okay. I like some of the songs. Just the song about fast food love, I think is the name of it. I enjoyed that song. There's some there's some funny lyrics in it. It's it's sung pretty decently, but. Uh, but, but then there's some of those scenes that just go on and on and on, like the, the scene where, maybe it's the same song, I don't remember the song now, <laughs> but where, no, where he's imagining him in bed with his now lesbian girlfriend and, and a bunch of other <laughs> And then this girls. is just a bunch of other random naked Bring girls. Bring some chicken. Mm, that does sound good. That does sound good. Give me some. Okay, see ya. But I thought the, the lead actor was kind of really good. I liked that kid. I thought he did a good job. Arby? I fucking hate stupid names. I even thought the girl did a good job, too. I liked Wendy? The, yes, I thought those two did a great job. Even her girlfriend was good, and Ish, and the general was good. I about said Colonel. <laughs> uh, I really enjoyed the general quite a bit. I just didn't... Yeah, like you're saying, the only parts I couldn't follow was why, uh, how this bad stuff, I mean, we all know it was on the Indian burial ground, but yeah, like you said, it started with, would this have started if that bag didn't fall over and the egg, like, where did this box of pulsating veiny eggs come from? We don't know, do we? Yeah, it's... it's... And then, like, some eggs, they get into you somehow and some you can turn into things so many different things from so many different ways and that was all really like confusing it was just like what can we do this time how can yeah we do it's like no weird? no thought was put into the logistics the, of how of you become part. yeah yeah of the quote-unquote horror part because even at the beginning zombie arms start popping out of the ground and then and then they just come back in and then nothing happens again until a year later when they build the American chicken bunker. And then it's not even the dead rising. It's it's like you have to eat the chicken to turn into one, or you have to get killed by one to turn into one. I guess. And they don't show using the bad eggs to make the chicken, you just assume because the new chicken has things on it that obviously you wouldn't eat, but they still eat it and yeah, that part was just weird and confusing, but, like, it's all lighthearted and fun, and, like, I, it was easy for me to let the storyline go, because it was just like, Is oh, what it? crazy weird <laughs> shit's gonna happen next? You're looking too hard. I don't think so, for man, because... Susan Cain. No, I'm not at all, because I, again, I love those type of movies, man, but I still think there has to be still enough thought put into your story and then add in your jokes it really felt felt like that okay we got this joke let's just forcibly put it into there mm -hmm. it's so the jokes are so forced and some of that dialogue which is supposed to be bad it's uh -huh. supposed to be bad dialogue but it's too bad where it's like they're forcing a joke into this dialogue to like not give us and not give us any story I compare it to movies like the freaking scary movie franchise and the direction that ended up taking where it literally is it's another movie parody one right after another it's a series of skits with no story that ties it together and th and that's okay because I like Saturday Night Live so I will take a series of skits knowing that there's not supposed to be a story tied in here but you're making a movie that there's supposed to be a storyline and you're not going to give me a story. Well, I think Toxie 4 was way more that. To me, Toxie 4 was so disjointed. It was just like scene, 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 scene. I hope they tie together. At least this one, I mean, yes, uh, how they were turning into Indian chicken zombies or whatever they turned it. They didn't all turn into the same thing. 
always. They all yeah. morphed out of things differently, but like that was just all the same to me. Like the story was, it seemed to flow a lot better than Toxie 4. I'm not saying it's perfect, but it flowed a lot better than Toxie 4. The part I had trouble with was the literal dialogue. So like, when you say story, do you mean the overall story of how it's told or the dialogue in which the story happens? Because the dialogue, I fucking hated most of it because so many times it was like incredibly racist to just be out there, you know? I didn't feel like it was, yeah, I hated that. It was, that was forced to try to be edgy. It's that joke that they, they started with Toxic Avenger Part 1 where everybody referred to Toxie as a hideously deformed man of superhuman strength. And that is how everybody would say it. Instead of saying, oh, Toxic Avengers over there, it's like, oh no, the hideous deformed man of superhuman strength is over there. Uh -huh. And so they do that a lot. Like the Paco Bell character, they would literally always refer to him as the gay Mexican or something like that. Instead of calling him just Paco Bell, it would always be Paco Bell, the blah 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 gay Mexican, blah blah blah. Which in those things gave it a nice feel of old trauma stuff. Yeah, that joke is funny maybe once or twice, but the hammer, hammering in every freaking time, it's not funny anymore. And, I, and I'm not disagreeing that this is totally... <laughs> they, if they make another movie, it's just going to be a complete parody of what Troma is. They were just they seem to be mocking themselves at it this is. point. It is. I don't think it's as bad as your complete hatred for it, and you want this movie to die. <laughs> but I think it's, you can still have fun with it, because it's nuts. It just drives me nuts, because I know... You just want more out of Troma. I know Troma and Lloyd himself, they have... They have the potential to be this. And they have and, their thing, and they do and, their thing and the yet, way they do it. And yet they think that they're this, and they focus so much on this because they think that's what, that's what their are. fan base uh, it wants and what they are. When this is nothing more than a fart joke and a gay joke and a racist joke and a shit joke and then throw some blood on it. But it... But there's so much more than that. When when Tromeo and Juliet and Terra Firma were so good as movies, mm -hmm. to see them really start to get, because we've been following them for a long time, you know. Since high when school. those two came, and then with Toxy 4, it was a kick in the nuts, and now this, it's as far as their own self produced films. Yeah. It's just like, is the hope gone? Oh man. You wanna, I don't know. It's sad to see it not keep going up after those two. Yeah, yeah, because it really climbed up because they took a dark time in the late 80s and 90s of doing things like the Toxie sequels and the Class of Newcomb High sequels where it really felt those films were, it went in the other direction where they were like watered down versions of trauma and, and it almost felt like they realized like, eh, we're supposed to be this. So let's add a lot more of, of dick and fart jokes and, and gay jokes and that kind of stuff. And it started getting back to that with movies like um, Sergeant Kabuki Man. But then but then they hit gold with Tromeo and Juliet and Terra Firmer. Do you and feel now they like just keep the, going in the other direction. I felt like the effects in Poltergeist made it feel like the old days. Oh right? yeah. A lot of that stuff was so over the top and fun. And oh yeah, like massive when Paco Bell falls into the thing and it's in the in the grinder and it's way more blood that's in <laughs> the uh, entire cast of Poultry Guys, let alone of yeah. just what's in, in Paco Bell and body parts flying and stuff. My because my favorite moments of this movie is when the chicken dead are attacking and it's, oh, it's, it's chicken awesome. chicken zombie mayhem. Yeah. Those what was a lot that stuff, that shit was fun. Yeah. Like when the one peels the face off of the one guy and starts sitting there and it's like Mm, I love eating the skin, you know, parroting, you know, yeah, eating you fried chicken. It. That stuff was funny. Yeah. When the one guy gets attacked by chicken nuggets, that was funny. That's though that those scenes of random mayhem uh, with the chicken zombies. That was trauma right there. That's the trauma I know and love. So it was in there. It's in there. There's moments that are in there, and that's where I get disappointed in it. 
because the concept's great. Chicken zombies, that's that's unique, that's different, that's something bizarre and MB movie-ish that is right right up there for trauma. Let's make it a musical. That, you got me there. Same vein as making a toxic Avenger. Yeah. Or a Kabuki man, a police officer. It's all the same weirdness that trauma is. And that's great. Yeah. But then, but then there's so many misses. So the concept is all there and there's, there's so much potential. And then it just, it just falls flat for me. There's so many misses with it and so much reliance on shit jokes. The fact that the after Jared shits himself to pieces. I'm, I'm glad they used the censor stuff. Oh, uh, that yeah. doesn't mind. I don't mind that either way where Lloyd Kaufman censors himself because it shows a shot. It's, I don't know. I mean, it, it, it's uh, they try to make a joke out of it. Um, and I still to this day don't know the full story and why they did it. But there's a shot where Joe Flagshaker's on the toilet. And it's a POV shot up from the toilet where you see Joe, all you see is Joe Flagshaker's ass. And there's supposed to be shit raining down from from the anus, but there's a sensor bar over the anus, and then there's several different little sensor bars that's supposed to be covering shit as it falls down in the toilet. Could almost be funny, but it just feels so weird and out of place and so untrauma to like hide it, you know. Especially when it's like you've already shown us so much, and you're gonna censor that. Yeah. Well, and our friend John Potta, he said he got to ask Lloyd why he did that and Lloyd said well when you and your wife are funding this movie but you know mortgaging your home and if she wants to do that then you'll do that it's too much and if so if that's the real excuse then why even have that shot in there well I'm sure it was she didn't you know know until it was too late and then they couldn't backtrack and they had to have it in there yeah you could still leave it on the cutting room floor though there's too much stuff on the floor already. It's gross. The thing, and then, and it is, it's just, you know, I have a strong constitution, and I don't offend very easily, but don't they just linger in that bathroom forever when, when so Arby and, and Denny are in there talking about cleaning it up? And, he, and then there's a whole musical number inside this shit-covered shit -covered bathroom. bathroom. And they picked the shoe up out of the toilet, <laughs> huh. which kind of made me chuckle a little bit. But it's just so, it's well, just too much. Here's the thing. Here's what it comes down to. And what I'm curious about, would you recommend people to watch this movie? Where do you stand on it? I think that's what that's Turner tough. was looking for, maybe. On the, I can't remember how he thought, if he liked it or not. I think he thought he, it was fun or... Joe said he liked it a lot, our friend that watched it. I think, but because several of our friends that do have, that did enjoy this movie, uh, like John Potta and our friend Joe Zerl, they all had experiences with this movie. And what I mean by that is they both saw them in theaters with other people, with like Joe, he saw it with his friends and they just riffed on it sure. and had a good time with it in that regard. And then our friend John, he saw it in an actual premiere screening of it, uh, with a, which I'm assuming cast and crew maybe, I don't know if that's true or not, but, yeah. but he saw it with a crowd, a crowd that also appreciates Tromer for what it is. Easier to have fun. Easier to have fun as opposed to, I watched it by myself in my living room, you did the same. So if you're going to, I would recommend watching this movie All right. with a group of friends oh. because I think that's the best way to ever experience a trauma movie. That's true. And it'll also make the bad parts of this movie, I think, enjoyable as well, that, that I can't look past. Because there's still nuggets in there that I want people to see. There's still... Nuggets. No <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Man, that was the first time I ever did a joke and I didn't mean to. <laughs> There's still parts in this movie, bits and pieces, breasts and thighs, that I think people need to see. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's totally good, worth watching. I just, yeah, they try too hard to offend you sometimes. We should probably wrap this up then. Yeah, we probably should. So, yeah, check out Poultry Guys, but make sure it's with a bunch of friends. You can make a drinking game out of every time they uh, 
do a racist joke or every time you hear a fart noise, but you're gonna get drunk really quick if it's every time you hear a fart noise. You'll enjoy it more, so. <laughs> so yeah, that wraps up another episode of Movie Reviews from the Asylum. Is she back with that chicken yet? Yeah, I don't know. Freaking I should look for her or something. She took your car. What? Yeah, we better go find her. We better go find her. All right, see you guys. See ya. Where is the car? You never... Where do you park?